what's going to create that volatility if we haven't seen it already in the first week and the markets have actually showed some gains? Well, listen, the markets are trading at pretty large valuations right now. And all those things that you mentioned could contribute to that volatility. But for 2021, let me make it clear that there are two variables that go into 2021 that are going to make 2021. And that is the Federal Reserve and the federal government. So when it comes to the Federal Reserve, they've already came out and said over the next three years, they're going to keep, keep interest rates low, and that's going to prop up equities and prop up the economy. They're also going to continue to buy bonds in stocks, or in stocks like Apple and all these large companies, which is also going to keep the economy afloat. Then on the other side of things, you have the federal government. And right now, we see that the Democrats have the House, they have the Senate, they have the presidency. So that means more additional stimulus is being printed as well. So that is also going to keep things afloat. One of the big headwinds to the markets over the next coming years is the raise in corporate taxes. As we know, since the Democrats do control everything, the rise in corporate tra taxes is likely over the next three years. But that being said, with the government you know, printing more money and handing out more stimulus, that is also going to offset the corporate taxes. So there's a lot of volatility and a lot of things that could happen in 2021. And the markets are up you know, 13% from pre-pandemic levels. If you would have told me beforehand that in a pandemic, when we have job loss and a lot of issues with the economy, that we are up 13% from the pre-pandemic levels and the 68% off the lows, I'd be amazed. I would not believe you. But that's where we're at right now. Yeah, you know, look, I think a lot of us are amazed right now. So here's what else is rising. Bond yields, the 10-year hitting its highest level since I think about March um, in response to, to President-elect Biden saying he's going to add some of that additional stimulus and which you considered a factor for volatility, the, the Democrats having the White House and both chambers of commerce, uh, Congress, excuse me, appear to be actually boosting those bond yields. So what's your take on that? I think in the long term, over the next couple of years at least, I think yields are going to remain low. I mean, we have, like I said, the Federal Reserve that would keep rates at 0%. If not go lower, I mean, I'm not saying we're going to go negative, but I think it might be a possibility considering that we still have a ton of issues in the economy that need to be fixed. And going forward, like I said, we are seeing job loss. Small business is hurting right now. I think we're going to see a permanent hurt uh, or loss to these small business owners and these jobs in the small business industry. Before the pandemic, a small business was the backbone of the American economy. I don't know if it's going to be that way going forward. Yeah, look, so I, do I, think I don't think any of us know if that's the way it's going to be going forward. But before we let you go, so we are running a bit out of time. Can you give us some picks? I know you're, you're bullish on tech and health care. Can you give us one stock in tech and one in health care that you think is primed to take advantage of the environment we're seeing in 2021? Yeah, absolutely. So going forward, I think Alibaba is a great stock right now. We're seeing at a discount 10 to 15 percent off a couple weeks ago, about 25 to 30 percent off its highs. Right now, it's got a lot of headwinds ahead and a lot of um, you know, news around it, surrounding it with Jack Ma, you know, being missing, but he's not necessarily missing. He's just laying, laying low right now. You know, they're having the investigation right now with, um, you know, the monopolistic practices or antitrust practices. But Alibaba is China's bread and butter, and they're not going to do anything to hurt the company. It's their way to compete against the world. It's the way to compete against the United States. It's the way to compete against Europe. I think that's a good stock moving forward. It's essentially the Chinese Amazon. I think that's a stock you have to pick up at these levels. In regards to healthcare, Ligon Pharmaceuticals, LGND, they say essentially make what goes into these COVID vaccines and COVID um, tests, and they allow um, essentially uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the product that they have essentially allows these vaccines to be able to be um, uh, taken in to the body, which is very good going forward as well. And that's going to be maintained over the next two or three years because COVID is not going to go anywhere. It's not going to go away all of a sudden uh, just because we have a vaccine. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.